A serene and elegant escape smack in the middle of Bangkok. That's what it is. Hi there, my name is Kevin and I make honest and to the point narrated video tours about unique hotels and flights all over the world. This is episode 142 coming to you today from the dare I say majestic Sintorn Kempinski in Bangkok. Stick around, the full tour starts in 10 seconds. Welcome once again to Bangkok. Right now, we're in the new Sintorn development in the Langswan neighborhood, the site of three hotels that opened in 2020. Of course, we have the Kempinski in front of me, but there is also the Midtown Sintorn and the Kimpton Ma Lai, which I've reviewed previously on the channel. If you'd like to know the exact rate that I paid for this stay or my next five videos in queue, please check out the description below. As we walk inside, you may have already noticed that we are in a sort of tunnel that runs straight through the ground floor of the property, with the lobby lounge in the middle. The tunnel was meant to give guests a feeling of seclusion from the elements and also connect them with the green spaces which flank both sides of the property. The interiors were designed by Bangkok-based P49 Design, who envisioned the lobby to bring all of those lush surroundings inside. Personally, I think there's something extremely cozy about the space despite how large it is. The super saturated greens and blacks, especially on a gloomy day like today, really does make for a very comfortable space. Let's quickly take a look at where we are. On a lucky day, you're gonna be around a 30 minute drive away from either of Bangkok's two airports. Once on site, you are kinda in the middle of your own little cocoon in the middle of the city, but still within easy walk of Lumpini Park, Plonchet Road, or the Ratchadamari BTS station. This 274 room property is actually the second Kempinski in Bangkok, the other being in the Seam neighborhood. When designing this hotel, Kempinski says that they, quote, envisioned a leafy garden destination. A quiet enclave admits the energy of one of Asia's greatest cities, where your complete well being is the purpose of every aspect, and where leisure and business intertwine, unquote. That is a wonderful sentiment, but we're going to need to wait to see if it holds up. But don't worry, since this video, like all of my reviews, is unsponsored, you're going to get my full honest opinion about everything here, because this hotel stay is 100% self-funded. One of the best parts about this space though are the acoustics, which perfectly host the trio which provide the perfect background music for your afternoon tea. Heading towards the south side of the hotel, we have two areas on the ground floor here. The reception area, which we'll see in a bit, and then the Firefly Bar, which is truly one of the more beautiful venues I've seen this year. The bar has an extensive drink menu, and while I normally don't show drink menus, I need to just share a bit today, because it's a very unique menu, organized by the geographic location that inspired the cocktail. At 47 pages long, it's quite a menu. And here you can see the small menu of food bites that are also available inside. I'm not normally one to gush over a venue's design, but between the lobby lounge and the Firefly bar, the camera really, really, it doesn't do them justice. In person, the blacks that you see become deep moss green. The wooden floors are richer. The high armchairs plush and comfortable. I might be so in love with it because it turns out that P49 are also the design firm behind the Sofitel legend in Hanoi, one of my all time favorite hotels.
Then on the other side of the lobby is the reception area where you'll be served a glass of iced tea as you check in, a process that is quickly and efficiently done at the desk. Let's head up to the pool. The pool is located on the ninth floor and cantilevered over the rear of the hotel. I think the pool itself is beautiful, but I think the area just behind it in the atrium is awkward and too stark. I wish that they would have continued that same super lush green principle that they had in the lobby. By the way, no matter what brought you here today, if you support authentic travel reviews on YouTube, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and check out my Patreon linked in the description below. I would need an entire video just to list out where I'm heading next year, but so far it's including five continents. From Samoy to Fiji to Auckland, Muscat to Odaipur to Cancun, Chennai to Bali to Fuwak. It's going to be a year packed with content and your support powers it along the way. This being the area that I think could be vastly improved. It just feels cold when it should feel tropical. A quick trip into the beautiful spa reception area before we head up to the room. For this day, I was on the 11th floor and had reserved a Grand Deluxe King Room, which at 66 square meters or around 700 square feet is their smallest room. Mine overlooked Lumpini Park. Kempinski refers to itself as the oldest luxury hotel brand in Europe, starting out in other hospitality businesses before opening their first hotel in 1952 in Berlin, the Hotel Bristol. Since then, they have expanded to their current 77 hotels, Notably, 21 of them are in China, and zero are in the US or Canada. They do, however, have properties in locations as far-flung as Djibouti, Erbil, Iraq, and Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. As we walk into the room, we are immediately in the dining and wet bar area, which opens up to the open-plan living room and bedroom. In designing the rooms, an attempt was made to have the rooms reflect local culture and everyday Thai life. I would take that everyday part with a big pinch of salt. Nothing about this hotel screams, I'm basic. Throughout the room, Putan flower motifs were used and incorporated with intricate patterns of the Rajabopit temple found on some of the walls. As I mentioned a while ago in my community post, I'm not sold on the brightly colored pillows or the furniture, specifically the sofa and chair in the seating space. Somehow, something that was meant to add richness to the design cheapened it a bit for me. Traditional Benjurong style ceramics were also used in each of the rooms. I give them a lot of credit for a very well-functioning tablet, which more so than just providing information, also allowed you to do everything from order room service to order another type of pillow. Connectivity in the form of universal outlets and USB ports are throughout the room and the light switches are nicely labeled.
The mini bar is nicely stocked with complimentary Tetra Pak water, Nespresso pods, and premium teas along with a limited supply of chargeable items. Housekeeping staff was also very generous with restocking, proactively filling my Nespresso machine, leaving extra bottles of water, and doubling my stock of pods when I simply let him know that I didn't need decaf. The walk-in closet is clearly big enough, well I would hope it's clearly big enough for any traveler, and has a separate vanity table. By the way, if you've ever seen my Apoorva Kempinski video from Bali, you may remember the very dusty rooms. I'm happy to report, these rooms were spotlessly clean, that's the first thing I checked. The bathroom was very nicely outfitted and featured one of my favorite brands, Panpuri. One problem with the bathroom. The bathtub drain makes a very strange sound, seemingly whenever the pressure changes. I kept thinking someone was knocking on my door until I finally figured it out. I fixed it by putting a wet washcloth over the drain. Kempinski currently have 12 more properties under development. The most interesting ones to me are in Lombok, the island next to Bali, Kuala Lumpur, Canela, Brazil, and three separate safari lodges in Africa. Finally, we have the balcony, which admittedly is a bit small, depth-wise, but you're going to be sitting out here and having coffee, not going ballroom dancing, so I think it's fine. And one last bit of storage area next to the front door that I almost forgot to show. All right, let's go check out the rest of the dining venues and the gardens. First up is the Japanese restaurant Kai Izakaya, or Ki Izakaya, inspired by the back alley Izakayas in Osaka and Shinjuku. The menu is nicely curated with a large menu of zensai, sushi, and one plate meals. The bar also features a wide range of Japanese whiskeys and sakes. Next up, we have two menus from the Flourish restaurant. One is Thai, and one is from the Western Kitchen. One interesting note about their room service is that you can order from any of the restaurants altogether. 
So I wanted to test them out on timing, and they passed with flying colors. All of the food was delivered in 24 minutes and was piping hot. After I received it all, I realized that I ordered quite literally the exact same meal that I ordered for room service at the Capella in Bangkok. The food here was better though. Before heading to breakfast, let me show you around the expansive gardens. Just on the other side is also a market shopping area with a variety of stalls and shops. The gardens are connected to the Kimpton's Gardens and you can surely go back and forth to enjoy both hotels venues quite easily. That strange kidney bean silver bulge up there is the swimming pool. Okay, and here we are at Flourish for breakfast, where the two menus I showed you earlier can be ordered for lunch and dinner. The decor inside is standard luxury hotel venue category, but they do put on quite a nice buffet in the mornings. I gotta note that the hot dishes on offer were not all that inspired. A few nice surprises on the Middle Eastern front, but otherwise quite basic stuff. There was a supplemental a la carte egg menu though that you could also order from. The cold section of the buffet is actually what impressed me. An extensive selection of cold cuts, cheeses, salads, pickles, and truly some really beautiful pastries. Other nice touches such as kombucha and a variety of milks were also on offer. And I do believe for the first time in my life, a buffet that features all three of my favorite fruit, pomelo, jackfruit, and passion fruit in that order. The eggs benedict also passed the test in just about every way, shape, or form. Last up for the food venues is the Delicatessen, which serves a variety of pastries, breads, and coffees. Then you can work all that off in the nicely equipped fitness center. And that is that. Let's head to the flip-flop score. Overall, there's really nothing that I can think of that I would change, other than some small things which are easily fixed or just personal preference. My scores are always relative to the price paid, 
which is why I did need to ding it in a few places, but obviously as a whole, I thoroughly recommend it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe so that you don't miss a beat. I'll see you next time from the absolute worst flight of my life on Gulf Air. It was a doozy.